Hello everybody, welcome. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to take a NP241 transfer case from an automatic and fitting it to a stick shift such as this, this MD5600. The only difference in this whole thing right here is the input shaft and you can exchange those. But at the end of last video, whatever one it was where I was discussing stuff about uh, grandma's truck, I said that I was gonna go pick up another transfer case and a new adapter plate. Reason why I want the new adapter plate is because one of the holes got busted off on the starter because two of the other starter bolts fell off on grandma's old engine. So I got a new used one to put on there. They're all the same. Transfer cases are all the same except for this is an MP241 DLD. The DLD, which stands for, in easier terms, is light duty. Grandma's truck had a heavy duty transfer case in it and this is it right here. But like I said, automatic. Stick shift is going in it, so I would need to make some modifications. I went ahead and bought that thing despite it being a light duty, no big deal, but I completely forgot that about a week ago I ordered the new input shaft. And I'm gonna show you guys the true difference in these things real quick, I'm trying to run one-handed. This is the input shaft out of the transfer case that I used on the green truck. I swapped over the uh, input shaft this is the only difference everything else is the same all good to go uh this will stick into a stick shift a little bit farther that's why it's taller but you can see right there 29 spline for the new one 23 spline for that one show you guys real quick if it's sitting out on a bench like this it's really really easy to change out but i'll have to take this whole transfer case apart to do this Boom, take these, put them in there, snap ring in, maybe, don't kill me, done, that's in there, ready to go, and it could go in there, but I have to split the whole T case in order to make this happen. Heavy duty, this is the heavy duty one, you see how big this tail housing is, it's one piece, versus the two piece here. And the output shaft will be bigger on the heavy duty. Uh, I don't think I've cracked open heavy duty other to see what else. I mean, the whole case is obviously a little bit bigger than that one down there, but I've never cracked one of these open that I can remember to see what the actual internals difference is. I know the input shaft, they go one to another, simple. So I'm gonna go ahead and start tearing this down. Yeah, we'll just go ahead and use the heavy duty one. I just have to get the rear drive shaft shortened by about uh, two and a half inches and it'll work go ahead and start tearing this thing down you're going to need snap ring pliers a bunch of other little goofy things but your common tools can tear it apart looks like somebody's been in this tea case before so they've hopefully replaced some horn clutch forks or something i don't know Man, they were generous with this goop. Holy crap. Everybody says you can just take that side off and get it out, but uh, you can't because you could change the bearing from this side if you were lucky, but pretty much that is a no-go. You have to split the whole son of a gun, which is a whole line of these bad boys all around here, but I'll start by taking off the uh, speed sensor. Okay, one other thing I forgot to mention, um, DLD, you got a PTO on here. It's a little bit different taking that tail housing off. Normally I can kind of snake this thing around the uh, oil pump, but I'm going to just go ahead and tear it apart. These are the little inside out snap ring plier things you're gonna need. If you don't got them, oh man, you're gonna be in for a world of hurt trying to take this thing apart. Come on. Even when you got the right tool, sometimes it's just a, a bear. When I take these things apart, I set them down in order and leave them the way right side up from the way I took them off. That way when I go put them back together, there's no confusion. 
this little plastic gear is your speedometer. Your color will coordinate what gear ratio your rig has. There we go. Snuck her around. Don't want to lose your magnet. Look at that. It's actually, look how clean that is. Oh, keep it up. If you like seeing clean stuff, the magnet goes right there. More fun snap rings. Joker. These are brand new snap ring pliers too. Well, there it is. We have, this is the wear item on it. Normally is the tip of the, I guess you call it a clutch fork kind of a thing or just a, uh, I don't know, I guess it would be a clutch fork, I don't know. But this one was cracked, but there definitely have been replaced. So my grandma had this thing serviced. <clears throat> I have another set. This side was fine. I don't know if I cracked this one, just taking it off, but I, I replaced the one side. We are at the stage where we're going to be doing the swapping. They didn't really leave that in a friendly spot, so I tear it apart here. The two plier or two screwdriver technique, come on. We're going to need to rob or source a bearing for right there. I didn't realize that. For the most part, the inside of this transfer case looks pretty damn good, but I don't have that inner bearing, so we are at a halt right now, unless I can get that one out. But let's just see how she fits. Money. Money, money, money. I'm just going to go ahead and take this whole thing to Napa tomorrow and get that part number off of it. I tried to pull it out of there, but there is not much of a lip, and... I don't need to ruin this one. This is actually the one out of the old, this is the one out of her truck right here. That little, uh, what? That one looks like it fell out a little bit on hers. Maybe I'll try to pull that out. It looks completely fine. Maybe I'll get the puller on that one. But this one, I don't, I don't want to destroy it just in case I could use this, in case somebody, I have no idea who would break an input shaft on their transfer case, but uh, you never know. I'm gonna try and pull this one out real quick. See what Got it out. Feels fine. Didn't hurt it getting out. I don't know why the hell it backed out a little bit, but uh, I'll probably just get a new one. Take this to town tomorrow. Guess what? She don't fit. What are you supposed to do? Get a wear washer for that or something? Glad I checked that out right now. Okay, disclaimer for anybody that has done this before and ordered one of these bearings. They come with two different sizes internally uh, for bearing sizes. And this one right here is set up for the smaller bearing. But that piece in there is a sleeve. So I did not know that until after I already put the transfer case back together. So you guys will see me go above and beyond and get a different part. While this one could have worked. Just letting you guys know. So I still have a good part that will work. I just got to get the sleeve out. Anyway. Continue with the video, subscribe, like, all that, get it. Well, that's not really the friendliest way to discover you got the wrong part. I looked on the place where I bought this from, just on eBay, where I buy most of my stuff, and they said to make sure that that bearing was the right one, but I honestly, I think I was just cruising, like, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and get one of those. I didn't do enough research, so I got two options right now to see if I could just get like a, a bushing or something to go in there. Instead of a bearing, it'd be definitely a lot nicer to have one of these. In which case, if I wanted to get a new one of these, I'd take this up to Dad's and just have him mill it out. That might be what I'm going to do. So as for right now, we need to close up shop tonight. And get this toolbox kind of out of the way. Uh, I'm going to put it over there. Because it's going to be raining. And I gotta bring a truck in here right now. 
Notice this whole pile of parts right here. These are not fun install parts. I hate, uh, well, I don't really hate it, but I just don't really get enthused about doing front end stuff. I have ball joints, tie rod ends. Uh, I don't think I need wheel bearings. If I discover I need wheel bearings for it, then we'll do that. But let's see what truck is gonna be on the cutting board. The 04, I haven't been driving this truck at all lately because 334,000 miles the front end is in need of some TLC it's a little loose and I crawled underneath there actually it's not loose enough to where I was like super concerned about it but something's squeaking underneath there and there's a couple things that don't have greasables so we're just gonna redo the whole thing these parts have been sitting in here for probably Whenever I did that wheel bearing install video, so uh, at least a month, so we need to knock this out. So let's go get the trip. Here's my new adapter plate. Paint her up so it'll match this fancy P pump 24 valve over there. And, <laughs> ooh, we need to find a home for you, right? Yeah. The 04, probably my favorite truck. 5.9, common rail, NV5600. I replaced it with a rebuilt one, and I actually think it's worse than the one that was in it. What happened to the old NV5600? It's right there. <laughs> it's gonna go on grandma's truck. So yeah, it's kind of funny. They're gonna meet again. I do have another, um, like the big beefy transfer case out of a third gen, and I could put it on the back of that. It would work just fine, but uh, it doesn't fit in between the frame rails of a second gen. So I gotta cut the exhaust on this thing, get this thing out of there. Ain't much holding it right now, but uh, We'll resume progress on that when I get the new part, which is probably 60 bucks, or we mill that one down. So until then. So for the sake of not having to wait another week to get this thing all back together, I called a buddy and he bought a, I believe it was a 99 truck that had been in a front end accident, pushed the whole front end back into the transfer case and it broke it off over there. But it was an MV4500, so the input shaft that I need from the transfer case is right there. And it's already got the bearing in there. Looks to be a good bearing. Part number's the same, so I'm just gonna harvest this out of it. I inspected that bearing in there. It had a little bit of uh, just some dust and stuff from sitting. So I cleaned her out. I'm gonna put some ATF in it right now just to lube her up because I don't want any problems. Shaft looks to be in great shape. Not worried about it falling apart on me. Bearings in great shape. We can put her back together. I knew my buddy had this, but I didn't want to ask him for it. But uh, circumstances sometimes just gotta go get her. So he's cool with it. I'll just order him a new one to have on the shelf because he likes to do this same stuff that I do. Um, swapping everything to a stick shift or if it's already got one. Uh, sometimes you gotta get a new transfer case. Oh, come on baby, don't fight me like that. Boom, boom. Okay, now we can start putting her back together. There's the piece that we needed. Done deal.
She is back together. Make sure everything goes into the correct gears. Got a neutral right there. Come on, get on there. Let's see here, that should be See, that's four low right there. Four low, neutral, four high, two high, or two. See? Boom, boom. Make sure the output shaft is spinning, and we're good. One thing that is a little bit trickier with these compared to the light duty one is there is a snap ring inside this housing that goes um, on the outside of this rear bearing for the tail housing and trying to get all the shafts to come down here so I can get that one in I had to mess around with the bearing up front and believe me okay when you're doing these if you're gonna be robbing parts off of another one keep those other ones separate because you do not want to grab something and put it up here from one of those and start looking around going where the hell did that extra bolt come from or where did that extra because mainly the snap ring if you've got an extra snap ring generally speaking you messed up so keep all of them cataloged down there and you should be good to go but uh go ahead and try this on grandma's new transmission You guys see the difference in the tail housing. Bat shaft, little shaft, two piece, one piece. Everything else, kind of for the most part, the case is definitely a little bit different, but not bad. I didn't even notice on this one, this is the one I just bought off Craigslist. Doesn't even have the vacuum pump selector on there. I mean, this is for when you shift into four wheel drive, diverts vacuum pressure or vacuum suction to the front end. I was wondering, I was like, what the hell is that? Didn't even, until I saw them side by side, I didn't even realize it. So we'll have to do some adapting for that son of a gun right there. But we got extras of those, no problem. But there we go. Looks a little bit more beefy. That'll settle some of the people in the comments going, Oh, you should have used a big one. I did. We're good. Comment below what you guys think. We are making progress, slowly but surely. I'm about to start tearing into this truck. Uh, I think I just kind of want to knock this one out. I already filmed the front end video, um, redoing Austin's. This one's going to get the same treatment. Um, the upgraded suspension, T to Y, Y to T, whatever it is, I forget. But I'm going to go ahead and start working on that right now. But until next time, guys, thank you so much for watching. Hope you learned something about, uh, screwing around with the transfer case. Uh, that one actually went together way easier Maybe because I had it up on a workbench, but the one on the green truck, again, I've taken apart like four or five of them and done the same thing. But for some reason, the one on the green truck just fought me the whole way. And this one I had a couple issues, but for the most part, done deal. Happy with that. Happy it mounts up to that rig right there. But anyway, guys, see you next time. Later.